What's up everybody, CoreyGFitness.com members. Welcome back to the Gcast. I got my homeboy, 4AM crew member. What up? Personal trainer. Yep. Uh, natural pro bodybuilder. The, yep. uh, elite, Last fall. Elite power lifter. Couple times. Fucking Zach Matheny. What up? Thanks for having me out. Dude. Good to be in uh, Granville. Yeah, it's good to have you on the porch, man. So what's good? What's going on in your world, brother? You know, just... Uh, Getting back into it after the gyms are reopened and, and uh, you know, trying to get my business back on track because that, uh, that was a wake-up <laughs> call for me. I mean, uh, luckily, I have a lot of great clients and, sure. uh, you know, I always I was telling a lot of people, hey, I'm an entrepreneur first, personal trainer second, so yeah. I can figure out some solutions. Solution-based. Yeah, and I just try to come to, like, hey, uh, you know, we went to parks, went in my apartment a little bit, you know, just trying to make it happen. So. Oh, luckily, you did make it happen, bro. Yeah. It was, it was actually fun to watch because I started to put myself back in that time frame like yeah. damn what the fuck would i do because yeah. you know my shit's been online for a long time you're still early building your business like that i mean you did exactly what I, every means possible yep. Yep. with the safest way too yeah you know we're keeping our distance going to the park most of the time luckily the apartment i have i live by myself uh you know so i had some space so it was good yeah. but uh wouldn't want to do it again i'll tell you that you know I'm hopefully kind of a, we don't gotta yeah, do I'm it again i'm afraid we don't have to but uh you know, it was uh, definitely, I, I was proud of myself. You know, I came out of it. Fuck I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely didn't make the type of money I was used to making. I had to cut back on a lot of things. But, uh, you know, being a, uh, having my own business, I didn't get a lot of the, you know, extra funds. Some people just sure. were unemployment. So it was tough. Um, but, you know, I cut back a little bit and things here and there. It just made it work. So. The biggest thing you said was solution. Yep. That, yeah. That's it. And listen. Because you, who are you going to cry to? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, so when you the, step out, bro. The next day, I'm like, I forget, I think I was talking to one of my female clients, Megan, and I'm like driving. I'm literally like in Grandview, the, you know, west side of downtown Columbus, and mm -hmm. I'm like looking for parks. And I pull in, and I'm like, nope, this one's like flooded. It's not going to work. There's not enough stuff here. And I found this one, and it's got like pull-up bars, dips, all that it's stuff. Perfect. It's perfect. So we made it work, you know. And, That's awesome. And luckily, you know, we had some good weather. You know, I always tell them, like, man, this would be so crazy if this happened, you know, in, in, winter. in the winter. You know, and they're saying, you know, who knows? And maybe it will, but crazy zach all right we're gonna roll it all the way back zach right. so when first off you've been training the 4am crew for is it five years yeah i think this fall, roughly yeah five years yeah yeah i was because i was coming man. to old school uh when i was going to capital probably i don't know six months and i wasn't really working out with you guys i would come at like i don't know five I he was like kind of see us i was intimidated <laughs> i always thought, listen i make fun of treadway so much now but i used to be so afraid of him I mean, that's, that's the other guy on the jump bros. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why I get, that's why I always joke about him coming from prison. Cause I like, I was so intimidated by him when I, I don't know why. How funny is that? Hilarious. <laughs> I just can't believe it. And you know, fast forward three years, we have the OPBA together. Yeah. You know, we have all, you know, Tyler's one of my best buddies now. So the fact that you were scared, like, and I, Kyle Brett said some shit like that too. Like the intimidate, that's so funny. Yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of people, maybe their first time they're intimidated yeah. a little bit, but that, I like that. You know, for me, uh, I was always kind of the gym guy, at least in high school and mm -hmm. college for sure. And but that was the first time I went someplace, and I was like, whoa! I was like, yeah, you know, I gotta, you know, kinda bring watch. your game. Yeah, for sure. I, the first time I remember three fifteen front squat. I was like getting there at five. You guys were squatting at the end. This was yep. like real early. I mean, there wasn't. I mean, it was maybe Corey Carp, Dunkel. Yeah, yeah, not. It was a handful of guys, but you know, I don't know. It was a. 315 front squad you know it was, it was good for me and, yeah uh, you said all right you better start fucking coming, coming in <laughs> yeah wasn't it um you competed against tommy and i was helping tommy for the bodybuilding show and that how we ended Basically, up kind of really connecting yeah, that's you know part I, of I'd it say ultimately what kind of brought us all together uh you know there was a time tommy and i were connecting a little bit and i found out he you know got help from you mm -hmm. He but went I, to my high school, yeah. so that's we we had known each other since we were younger. Yeah, and you know I didn't know this at the time, but the the my first bodybuilding show was in your old, old organization. Organization. Yeah. So uh, I did. I think I won the teen division, which was like good for me. This was I just yeah. turned twenty, maybe it was my last year of school. So, mm. uh, and then you know I met Tommy, and he talked to me a little bit more about old school. And I was I would go occasionally at this sure. point, but Tommy's like, hey man, like you got to start going more. You know, Tommy's who ultimately beat me. Yeah. Overall, the top two guys are old. You know, old school guys. Corey G members. Yeah. <laughs> at that time so yeah it was uh i mean that's ultimately tommy looked good that day too bro his hamstrings look crazy yeah i mean he's a ripped <laughs> ripped dude and so what's I mean, so crazy about tommy too we need to have him on the show i mean that dude's got his back fused i mean oh like really that, yeah, yeah that's right because he can never really like deadlift or anything like that his yeah. back is fucking fused bro 
Huh. So that's real. Yeah, he's ripped. It's right. real. So, all right. So you start coming in 4 a.m. crew. Yep. You had competed once in bodybuilding, not in powerlifting. Yet. No, no. I was, you know, I grew up playing playing soccer. I played two years of college soccer. So I, time out. That's the other thing. Our strongest guys <laughs> are our mostly soccer, soccer players. players. Yeah, John crazy. Gerlach. Yeah. Six hundred pound squatter. Tyler, Tyler. Yourself. I mean, it's and, and Arnold talked about this where the hamstring strength of the soccer players is nasty because of change of direction from such a young age and just the constant, I don't know, conditioning, GPP, it's, it's impressive. Listen, I, I, legs are probably my favorite thing to train. And when I was first, you know, I always have to tell the story too. My first year at Capitol, I'm, you know, just turned 18. I have all the Twitter workouts. Yeah, yeah, the old out. muscle farm you ones. Know, I have them tabbed. Yep. You know, and I'm like flipping to him. But so I didn't do a ton of legs because I didn't really have to. I mean, my legs were super strong from soccer. I sure. mean, and I didn't really deadlift much. I, we had a good strength conditioning coach. We would do like box jumps. We would squat heavy maybe. But, you know, I was following your, a lot of your stuff mm -hmm. when I turned 16. So, you know, and so off, crazy. Off, <laughs> yeah. Off, se off season, I was doing a lot of your stuff. But in season, sure. you know, we would follow some of their stuff. But I was still lifting four or five times a week in season college sure. soccer. I mean, I started about Did you play all age. four years. Just two. Just, just two. Years. I had that blood clot. Oh, that's and right. That Tell like, me about that. Yeah, yeah. So my sophomore season, it was the spring. So in college, mm -hmm. you'll play like a spring. The, your full season's in fall, but mm -hmm. spring you'll do, I don't know, a month of training, right? Okay. So it was probably towards, you know, end of April, end of our spring season. I, you know, I'm in good cardiovascular shape. And mm -hmm. this has kind of been a, a big aha moment for me just overall in my health. But I woke up one morning. My calf is like kind of like hot. Mm -hmm. And like it's swelling and you know, I, I ran the night night before like kind of late like on incline too and Sure. So I was like, oh, maybe I pulled a muscle. I called my mom. She's a nurse. She's like you have a blood clot and She that, called it. Yeah, so I, really? th that's on a Sunday morning. I don't think I've ever heard this story Sunday Yeah, yeah, so Sunday morning this is I'm 19 at this point in time Sunday morning the Athletic facilities not open at Capitol. You know, I can go in as a soccer player whenever you know sure. get treatment and stuff so I go in Monday morning uh, and I'm like, hey, I think I have a calf strain, you know, whatever. So they start actually icing it and, or heating. I forget which one, but, you know, I find out later, too. The, the complete heat. opposite of what they should be doing. Exactly. But, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're treating it like a calf strain. Yeah. Luckily, that day, there was an Ohio State doctor there, and he was like, just come in. Let me talk to you. And he starts acting like family history. Both sides of my family have had clots, but they were in their, like, 90s. Yeah, so yeah, So yeah. nothing like genetic thought, but he's like, I think you have a blood clot. So I go in Monday to Ross down at Ohio State, and I have a big sucker right under my knee. So so what the fuck they do? Drain that thing? Or no. What? Put right away. Shot right in your stomach. Cumidin. It's like this blood thinner, fast acting. <laughs> he's telling. You know, it's crazy. I, like I'm. I mean, this. I I cried because I was like, he's telling me. Well, I yeah. I can't play soccer. And he's of course. Like, you know, I can't do contact anymore. I at this point I, had, I was planning to go to Ireland, and he's like, you can't fly. Oh there. yeah, because you studied abroad. I mean, yeah, and he's like telling me all this. I'm like, what? You know, and the, you know, and, and it's hitting it, you fast. Yeah, you know, after a few months, you know, you get all these tests done and things. And I find out I have this like genetic disorder, and, and the best way I can explain it, if if people follow NBA close, Chris Bosh, he had this thing. Yeah, maybe yeah like I remember Five that. or six years. I have something very similar to he does. Basically, my body thinks uh, my blood's good, but mm. I it actually it's thicker. So I have to take a, a daily blood thinner so you take a daily blood thinner mm -hmm. no shit that's why you know i don't know if you i, I try not to get hit or anything but I, yeah i bleed like crazy like bruise really easily so damn yeah living like an old like an old guy. that's crazy yeah and the fact that it showed up this young on you yeah so it's a it's a genetic, genetic thing. thing though yeah, it's called a loops inhibitor it's just basically this thing that you know tricks my body into thinking so I, you know so if you get in like a car wreck or something zach you have to be real yeah careful. kelsey's always on me I, I should be wearing a medical bracelet or something like that i gotta be better about that but uh so yeah. when you're getting yatted up or you do you bleed no, more you know, it's actually crazy so i've gotten most of my tattoos on a blood thinner and yeah at, at my house <laughs> Yeah, there's no liability for him, I don't think. I'm just kidding. That's but, amazing. But, no, so at first, I, when I first started getting them, I was like 18. This was my first one. wasn't on the blood thinner, but everything after that mm -hmm. was blood thinner. And at first, I didn't say anything to the guys because I yeah. was like, and at first, because the first few were small, and I was like, it won't be bad. No big deal. And they never said anything. They were like, you're not bleeding more or less. And then I finally, I forget which one I was getting, but I was like, hey, I'm on a blood thinner. And they're like, you're all right? I mean, so. Fuck. Maybe I, in my head, maybe yeah, I, I guess it doesn't go super deep, so that makes sense. Yeah, but and, and the other crazy, I, I have all these tattoos, but I, anytime I see get a needle, like blood drop, yeah. I pass out too. I yeah, just, dude. So I, I, me and you both. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm bad at that, that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I just, 
but well, you, but ask. when I give blood, like um, like if I have to get my blood tested or whatever, like when I do go to do my hormones and that, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, see, I pass out every time. That's I got a concussion last year. I was at my doctor and I was like, <laughs> hey, I need to lay back. And she like laid me back a little. And she like she this all these damn nurses are like, oh, you have such nice veins, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I go. <laughs> And I hit my head against a fire extinguisher, and I wake up, and I'm on the ground, and she's like, I caught you. I'm like, no, you didn't. I'm yeah. Like, Turn the other way. But, yeah. Well, that's like when Ray got her upper epidural, epidural when oh, she yeah. was, she, that, that needle, they stick it right in her spine. Dude, that thing was in about See, an I inch. Like See, Dude, I just so, so here's, here's, here's what I was doing. So I was holding her hand, and I wasn't even looking at the needle, but I saw them like, pull it out and then go and then dude i just went to sleep i hit my head on her knee and then oh, you just passed out oh passed out hardcore it cost me a grand bro so check this out i was Both so of you were at the hospital yes That's hilarious. so they admitted me to the er so ray's getting her epidural i pass out in front of her dad knock my head off her knee and she's like you know can't catch me i fall down i wake up and then they're like you know the nurses are making fun of me and shit they and they admit me and i realize my insurance sucks so I get the bill like months later and it cost me a fucking grand. And I was like, are you, I'm, it was, I was so mad at myself. Yeah. I mean, I literally, Kelsey said, made these jokes to me and she's like, you're not going to be able to be in there. I'm like, I don't know. I yeah, just do your best. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, Corey passed out. I can do it's it. so good. <laughs> That's funny. So what was your degree in from Capital? Finance and economics. It was like a mixed degree. So it's okay. like just half finance classes, half economics. And talk about your initial job path and then yeah. the transition into what you're doing now. That's actually really funny you're asking. So Scoot I, up just a little bit I, too, Zach. I, I, found, I found out last night. Actually, the the department I worked for at Cardinal, my first job out of school, yeah, was Cardinal in, Health was in finance. Okay, what I you know had my degree in, they actually just all got, you know, pushed essentially pushed out. You know, they outsourced essentially, yeah. which it was just crazy. So you know, I'll, I'll tell that story a little bit and try to bring it full cir circle. But you know, I, I'm preparing for school. You know, I just started lifting at old school at two, and you know, if you asked me maybe early in college, I was like. I never really had an interest in being a personal trainer. I, I just loved. To me, I think maybe it was a little ignorant, but I loved working out so much. Mm -hmm. At least when I was really young, that I was like, you know, I want to try to focus as much as I can on how strong I can be, right? Sure. Or how how ripped I can be, you know that. Which has worked out pretty good for you, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely like a selfish thing in the beginning, and then when I well, started, I think everybody's trying to build their confidence, and, yeah, and it's sure. got some narcissistic <laughs> things to it. It's just what it is. Yeah, and. You know, so I, I, I'm starting to work out at old school as I'm preparing to graduate. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I, I made a lot of good connections at Capital. So I had some, you know, I had a couple job offers. So I actually took a sales job at uh, Lifetime Fitness just for a few okay. months. Because that's where I worked. Just for, to learn it. Yeah, just that's probably where I worked for about four years through a little bit of high school and college. I didn't I even know Lifetime. that either. I was a lifeguard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I started as a lifeguard there, but essentially took a sales job at, you know, a big corporate gym mm -hmm. all right and selling memberships i did that for a few months what did you learn by just that process zach i learned th their fucking number <laughs> yes so <laughs> the biggest thing i i'm so appreciative of that job because that's actually what made me want to be a trainer because yeah. here's the big thing and i and i liked it you know i like sales like i like being presented with someone in front of me and trying to overcome objectives and i, I like trying to navigate that sure you know, that's that's fun to me so I found that when I was selling memberships there, and I did a pretty good job there, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, all these add-ons, you know, like, hey, do you want personal training, all this, and then we're bringing down some personal trainer. I don't know him, and now I'm trying to t t take this person I just You saw, don't know how good he is. Yeah, and I'm trying to upsell it to them, and you know what, that's okay. I, you know, I learned great sales from that, but that doing that made me realize, you know what, I wanna be in control of this whole cycle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I wanna be the salesman and the personal trainer. So I, I'm appreciative of that job, and uh, I mean, we had quotas, uh, it was a commission job. So I think everyone can benefit just from those. Oh, those the pressure, tools. dude. Right. So, uh, you know, for me, it was good for that. But after that, I started working out consistently more and showing up more to old school. And, and I, I got this job offer from Cardinal Health. And, you know, I'm 21 at the time. And sure. here and I, I'm thinking like, man, this like big Fortune 500 company. Big. I think like th they might be a fortune one they're you're oh huge. they're big i mean they're, they're big, one of the biggest stock market mind. big on the from what they do they're at their top end yeah for sure so you know here i am and i'm like man like 
you know, it's a salary. It's not much more than I'm really making on top of my commission. I think I was actually making more at Lifetime than the commission, but I was like, you know, it's stable. Sure. And Tyler Treadway and I were starting to talk about OPBA a little bit, and I was like, and Tyler Treadway was at Cardinal. So yep. I was like, you know what? Maybe we can do this. We'll be on the same schedule, and we can build sure. that. So I took the job, and that was about 10 months there. And, you know, I, I started part-time training on the, on the side there and mm -hmm. slowly building my business. And then after about 10 or 11 months there, I got fired. I got chopped. And Which is so hard for me to believe that somebody fired you. Yeah. You I, must have really been fucking up. I was fucking off. I, so a lot of the time, most of the time I was leave. I was just kind of darting out early. You know, I was getting my shit done. You could just tell that you weren't really invested no, no, in no. it. No, no, no. I still, I like to tell this, Jake Sanders, like, you know, he, he doesn't lift with us anymore, but he always, he said this to me once, you know, we're 22 and Jake's actually how I met Kelsey. So, yeah. but he, he looks at me and I don't know, this halfway through working at Cardinal. He's like, man, he's like, you, you look so unhappy. And like it, like it, fucking it, it Jake Sanders, yeah, kind of huh? like that's hit, cool. It kind of like hit me a little, and I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Cause I w I was cool with Jake, but I wasn't like yeah. super tight with him." Sure. So in my head, I was like, "But he just picked that up on you." Yeah, he just picked. It, he just and I was like, "Damn, man!" I was like, "Maybe I'm." And so I started trying to figure out this plan. So Tyler and I had the first competition scheduled as like I'm gonna say March or April. Yeah. My plan was lead by June. I was fired January 11th. I remember you came to the gym and told me you got fired. I said, I think it's probably the best thing ever happened it to was. you. It was. I was pretty <laughs> That scared. was my answer. It was tough for like two or three months. <laughs> Luckily, I had just moved back in with my dad. I had some money saved up. I, I, I had like three clients at this point in time, maybe yeah. two. And one of them I still train today. But How I long was, did it take you to replace your income? It wasn't that long, was it, Zach? Six months? Six months. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Maybe at most. Like, you know. You cut your expenses down and you got to work. Once again, yeah. I, luckily, my my dad had space at his place. I, you know, I did a lot of eBaying. I did like little things like that. I cashed He's hustling. Up, I had a four hundred one k at Cardinal for like I don't know ten or eleven months. It didn't really build much, but it built some. And I but took you a cashed it. shit ton of penalties on yep. it, but just took it. You know, I did I, that same shit with Rachel's bro. Whenever I started Muscle Farm, we cashed out hers from her being a teacher. And I had to pay my, I paid my mortgage with it for like eight or 10 months just so I could get some leeway. Sometimes Listen, you got to do shit like that. That was my car payment for like three months. So, yeah. you know, I, it, it helped me and you know, I, it was, I was scared, but luckily, you know, I, I realized this early and I had a, a college professor kind of teach me this and I always come back to this and we talk about this a lot, but trying to keep my costs as low as possible. For sure. You know, I, I'm still, I always try to remind myself, you know, <laughs> Hey, I'm still in a position that I can keep my costs as low as possible. So that gives me a lot. Of room, a ton right? of leeway, you know, bro. I'm trying to figure things out. I talk out. to Trey about that all the time. Like, he can keep his costs next to nothing and just Listen, keep putting forward that's like future stuff together. Younger guys, they ask me, like, you know, maybe what advice I'd give them. I would say that. Just try to, you know, figure out your nut and just keep it as low as possible. So, Huge. You know, that, that that's what I did, that transition process. And I slowly started building my clientele. I worked for this guy downtown mm -hmm. and, you know, worked for him about 18 months. And then I realized, with a lot of support from my clients, I mean, I, honestly, I, I don't think I wouldn't have left that gym too uh, if I didn't have a lot of support from my clients. And, and really, going through that Cardinal thing, that was the lowest I'd ever been. Sure. I mean, for sure. Well, yeah, you I, I feel in, like I just got my fucking fired from my job. And, and, and one of my big mentors at Capital, she helped me get that job. So I was like, you know, I was like, for sure, embarrassed. Um, I felt like I fucked up pretty bad. Yeah. But, you know. You felt like you fucked up. You committed to tell me, and I say it's the best thing ever happened to you. Yeah, I was probably maybe like a little mad. I was like, maybe I was. I was probably like hoping it was like Corbin. Like, oh, it's okay. It's like, it's like no fuck. fuck this. And it was. It really was. Well, because it puts the pressure on you. Yeah. To do something you love. Yes. Yeah. And and, and you and I don't think you would have done that for a while, because no. it, it it's almost impossible to push yourself, or for it to be that intense unless you're in that type of circumstance listen, i i wasn't with your personality too bro no, no no listen that's something i've had to learn is being riskier for sure i you know i've always i realized the the importance of taking risks and you know even failing at it you know sure. we can talk about OPBA oh, and all that too but you know i I definitely am someone who probably shied away from it at least a little bit when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, well, younger, so, you're still what, 25? 25, just turned 25. Just, but, yeah, that's crazy. So, so I, you know, I was pushed at that Cardinal job, and mm -hmm. that's what I, for me, I'm happy I got fired because I, I don't know when I was going to leave. In my head, I was saying June, but. But it's, hard, but it's really hard to cut that paycheck off. That, that's kind of my stable. point. But when it's cut for you. When it's stable. And think about this, and you've probably, what, doubled your salary since then, roughly? Yeah, a little I mean, over. That's fucking sick, bro. And you love what you do. Yeah, and I work, you know, about the same. <laughs> yeah. You know, a little more for sure. But I mean, 
And always, talk about, and it's so much more rewarding when you help people, bro. It's my, not even the same. My easiest days at Cardinal are harder than, you know, my my harder hardest days training. Of course, I, I, it's just you know, I the big thing I at least identified when I was working at Cardinal behind this cubicle is that I was missing this connection with people, and yeah, you know, I didn't necessarily know if I was I, I how I was going to help people, but I love fitness so much, and you know, I, I couldn't ask for you know a better route. You know, I'm. I have no regrets about how any of that happened. I'm very happy I got fired. You know, I still I, can't believe Treadway's got the job over you. <laughs> that yeah. cracks me up. For you, you, I almost feel like he was trying to get fired. I thought so too. <laughs> I guess I just I thought I was being so low key too. I was like sneaking out of there. He wasn't that. getting away with anything. I was like training clients and shit. And oh my god, you used to see my face when he was like, <laughs> he's like, we caught you. He's like not coming in at the right time. And I was like. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. I thought my life was over. But. Well, because I think also the traditional path just got flipped upside down. Listen, everyone in my family, my my grandpa, when I got got that job on my mom's side, he says to me, he's like, that's great, Zach. He's like, you'll be able to work there for 50 years, collect your 401k and retire. And that's just, I mean, he's, I don't know, 70. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But that's the disconnect because that's not, that's not realistic now at all. No. I mean, that's not. <laughs> and you didn't think that was really going to happen, did you? No. I was <laughs> miserable in 10 months so yeah i mean but wow but what a what a cool path though zach i mean and yeah. only be 25 years old to go yeah, through yeah. all of that already yeah I, I mean i'm super thankful uh you know it's i just i've get i'm getting better at realizing in the moment that hey you know like this these bad things and like that COVID thing i knew i was like hey you know what this is gonna make me such better you know how much Bro. new shit i picked up like training people outside like calisthenics because you have no choice all this different stuff you know i, I became such a better trainer because of that so that's the way you can look at it, right? Same as same as me. I was like, you know what? Then I had to create the bands only and the body weight. All these things I wasn't working on before, yeah. they were a need. So of course it made my it made my programming better. It made my thought process better. It pushed me. I was working probably double what I was working before, and it's like one of those things where, you know, you, instead of looking at it as like, uh, oh, woe is me, I'm a victim. You look at it like here's the opportunity to separate myself, well, which is what you did. A big, th you know, like. I didn't realize how big the in-home market, uh, you know, like in-home training, and you know, I picked up a few of those, and that's that's been huge for my business, you know, doing things, you know, just traveling out and you know, mm -hmm. charging a little more for the travel too. So, yeah, just adapted, just had to. Ta did you um, when that first hit? Did you automatically go to that, or did you do a "woe is me" day or two? Yeah, I was upset. <laughs> that's why, I, so, because I think everyone goes through that. So, so I speak on that. The thing, the thing, Kelsey and I talked about. She was like, Zach. <laughs> You know, she always gives me shit about this, but I love the gym. I mean, I don't have a ton of other hobbies. I, I sure. I just, I really do love it that much. I mean, that's why I can't, I can't do anything else but train people now. I mean, I really straight don't. up, straight up. So, you know, for me, it was tough because I felt like, you know, uh, like emo like personally, I got something taken from me and my business. Yep. I felt like I got two things taken from me, and <clears> I, I was like feeling pretty empty. Like I, I almost was like mad, but like who, who are you mad at, right? Yeah. You know, there's nothing. So yeah, two days. You know, I think it happened on like on a Tuesday. Or th you know, I was training people at the park by the end of the week, but I was upset, man. I, I, I don't know if it kind of like stunned me a little bit. It was like a flashbang or something, but I, I don't know. I, it, it, I it made me, it, it made me really think, G, <clears throat> for like a good week or two there. I was like, man, I. Like my, I know my, I was just scared because I knew my business was going to have to change or adapt. Yep. Right. Uh, I knew I was going to have to figure out stuff, you know, cause working out, that's how we get out of it. Right. That's Bro, of course. You know, I, we didn't go to old school. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't step foot in old school once that whole time, so, even though I was able to, I just so. forced myself to adapt too, which was part of, I think my, my process was, okay, I need to make sure I have available what everyone else has available so I can produce the content just like what everyone else needs. You was, know what I'm saying? It's so cool. To, I mean, I, 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 tell, tell, I train with Treadway three times a week, and I, we'd always talk about how I love being able to watch your process during this. I mean, you, at a bigger scale, I mean, you provided solutions so quick. And that, and I just saw that, and I was like, all right, that's what, at least that's what I I saw the opportunity, provide, dude. Yeah, I, I can provide a solution. That's what you did tenfold. It was cool. And, it, it, um, and I was even, as I was doing it, I was like pushing myself to like even get up earlier and produce more and, and release stuff faster because I knew I could tell is what people were telling me they needed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't like it had been if I, here's what I could have done. OK, get stack, whatever number we were on. Mm -hmm. I released that. I have a fucking deadlift bar at my house. I got a deadlift bar at the gym. I could have done the exact same thing. But what would that have got me? Nothing. No growth. Actually, it probably would have slowed. Yeah. No question. Yeah. So that so understanding that adaption is 
everything, bro. Yeah, I, I, I just... <laughs> you between you, all right? You got bands? All right, hit me up. You yeah. Only got dumbbells? Hit me up. Nothing? I got, hit me the up. The answer, I got you. I got you. If <laughs> not, mean, I'll make it tomorrow. I mean, literally, you, you gave people no reason to have an excuse. And I think a lot of people, yes. I mean, we talked about this a little bit. We think maybe, I personally think a lot more people were working out maybe. No, 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 because they had all kinds of fucking time. Yeah, and I think you, you know, from what you told me, you got a lot of new members. A lot of new, new members. That are just interested in the at-home stuff because, I mean. And they're not running back to the gyms, bro. That's the other thing. Not right now. You know, and you gave solutions where people could still come outdoors mm -hmm. and do things, which was amazing for your clients that are local. Yeah, you yeah. know, it just, um, here's the one thing that was interesting, though, was, you know, we understand, I think, how good the 4 a.m. crew thing is. Yeah. But until it's pulled from you, you really don't know. Yeah, I I found myself struggling uh, mentally uh, a Same. lot more. Like I definitely not as confident. I for sure, hundred percent. I mean, we both know. Ain't that, that crazy? That's what that that morning alarm does. Right? It makes well here it builds confidence. At the end of the day, I felt like every. This sounds like a fucking arrogant prick. I felt like everyone else walking around. I don't feel like that every day. Listen, it's I just don't. Sauce that gives it to us. So that is exactly what it is. So I don't know. I I definitely. You you know what I'm saying. I mean, for you real, feel it too. <laughs> like, I mean, for real. I, luckily, luckily, I was still training a little bit. That I felt that gave me confidence. Still. Sure. I mean, just being, at least it was two things. Like having clients that still wanted to train with me through sure. all this, and you know, a lot of that was them identifying, hey, I still need to be healthy. I mean, that's a lot of reasons. Oh yeah. People are to fight it. So yeah, real talk. And I had to train. I mean, you know, my workouts weren't nearly as good. I was lifting with a barbell three times a week with treadway, and I was doing a lot of at home stuff myself. Sure. But. Yeah, it was it was tough. I mean, you start to realize it, there's like, nothing like it. I there's mean, nothing it was, like it, and you realize that. Look, I was like, man, I hope this ain't the end of it. I'm starting to think that for a second. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's real, and and everything has its has its shelf life, bro. And I was like, man, I'm not ready for this one to be up. I yet. didn't realize that. I, that made me realize how competitive I was. I actually never really thought I was like super competitive. Well, because you never lost it. You went right from college sports to right into old school. Yeah. So a lot of people lose that competitive nature. I mean, it's just always subconsciously been so part of me. Yeah, because I, you know, I don't know. I just felt kind of soft. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, really I agree, I Probably dude. looked a little soft too, yeah. but. <laughs> I mean, it was, um, I remember the first week of the quarantine, I was trying to do the daily fires. Yeah. And my, my internal fire was different. I like couldn't like m make sense of what was going on i was all confused like and i and i thought to myself what i would normally be saying people ain't really trying to hear right now mm -hmm. because there's all this stuff that's being like taken from us and so it was like yeah it was a weird i had about a week where it just took me a second to process it you know I, for me i don't know if you experienced this but I, you know i i try to always be motivational for my course and that's like very one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. and i know a lot of your content's based around that but mm -hmm. i almost felt like guilty sometimes like trying to be you know, I really would always try to lie to myself in that first week, like, hey, like, you know, it's, yeah. it's going to be okay. Like, and I was sure. for sure lying to myself, but I found myself sometimes, like, not being able to find motivation because I almost felt, like, guilty. Like, man, like, this is a dark. I felt yeah. dark. That was the first time I felt like a lot of people were hurt. Yeah, no, I was, I was frustrated that because I couldn't find, like, my groove. And then I started yeah. to realize, okay, this is going to be the separator, as any perseverance type thing is. And that I can be a bright spot for people yep. and that I can have the solution for them and I can give them something to do. And then it finally got on track with my content and it was based around, you know, trying to keep their shit together during the quarantine. And I think it, it ended up being that for a lot as it was for your clients too. And I think that the people that benefited from that will never forget it. Yep. Well, you know, a lot of, straight this, up. This happened for like two months. You yeah. Know, clients would come see me at the park, and they'd be like, "Zach, you're the first person I've seen today." <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Yeah. And I'm like, Shh. yeah. And that, and that meant a lot to me. I mean, just you know, knowing that they felt comfortable enough to you know continue to train, and you know, I was like, hey, you know, and I have like 15, 20 clients here. I can still make a big change in their lives. Absolutely. So, you know, I just had. I was like, you know, I have to be positive because I, I was, I was definitely trying to woe is me definitely for a couple, mm -hmm. couple days there and. I felt bad because I'm never like that. Hell no. No. So. Well, dude, and the victim card never wins, especially not when you're a person that people are looking to for motivation. You can't play that. No, that's that's what we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Dude. So now we're on the other side of that, um, getting back to normal as we were wearing face masks in the gym yeah, this morning. Yeah, that was fun. What um, kind of what's your kind of outlook from a business standpoint, from a lifting standpoint? Talk about that too. Out of the gym. Now putting it back together, you know, obviously some of your, 
all time numbers, 640 deadlift at 181, 650 deadlift weighing 190 at 198, 580 squat at 181. Mm -hmm. Are you impressed so yeah, far? Yeah, yeah. I remember most That's of the good. big dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, good. being halfway your partner and coach along the way, it's yeah. been unbelievable to watch you, these lifts that you've done, Zach's been really cool. Oh, I appreciate that, Gene. So I know you're kind of climbing back into it now. Um, what what was it what's it feel like getting back to the gym and then the nervous system change? Like it, yeah. you don't realize how it changes when you're not under the weights for a little while. I was talking about this with an online client last night, but you, you don't realize how much it compiles, really. And the compounds. Yeah. Yep. And, and I really I really don't think uh, a lot of it's confidence. I know that. Like sure. I, I just have to get some of these heavier weights back in my hands, but I didn't think I was going to be this off. Yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of it's just positioning and things like that. For sure. But I'm definitely weak. Like my low back is probably the thing that feels the weakest. Yeah. And it's definitely so, not your hamstrings. No, <laughs> not, they're not as strong as they were though. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was repping out those Nordics pretty easy. I was getting like eight to 10 of those. Like, I'm catching you <laughs> <laughs> on those, but not on some other stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I definitely, uh, I, I guess I didn't realize how much that really builds up over time. And it's the consistency we kept. Mm -hmm. with these type of conjugate workouts for so long that you know the time you pulled 650 looked like the fucking bar was empty bro yeah and, and it's like you don't realize don't. that it's been three years since you fucking missed a fucking school you know deadlift workout i mean people don't realize that that's really what it takes and then the fucking shitty part about lifting weights is it takes forever to get good and it goes mm -hmm. away quick mm -hmm. it's fucking unbelievable but what? mentally battling through this will be huge for your career yeah, I just keep trying to remind myself I, how long the gym's been open now, like two, almost two months, right yeah. into May. Yep. So, you know, it's... I keep trying to remind you guys, too. Yeah, it's Take your time. Too you know, when we started squatting, you know, squat every day again, I think yep. that's going to be good. And that's Huge. that's basically what I keep trying to come back to, at least right now, in terms of in terms of lifting and, yep. and coming out of this is just, all right, let's build volume slowly. Volume foundation. In. Yeah, and I just really just getting the movements back down. Because, you know, I, I feel it, you know, I'll, I, I'm having days now where I'm like, oh, that feels good. Things mm -hmm. are moving. I had 290 on bench today with the two stops. That so, was awesome. Yeah, so and that's a number I don't really hit very much. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I feel confident it's going to come back. I, you know, I was floating with the idea of doing a bodybuilding show maybe, maybe this year. But mm -hmm. just with everything going on, I think that's probably more unlikely to, you know, be scheduled than a powerlifting meet. So yeah, I would agree with that. Maybe something... End yeah. of this year, I still want to pull seven hundred. Oh, uh, dude, under two hundred. I mean, There's dude, a thousand percent that's gonna happen. You're you're getting right there. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's I know this is a process. I know this that's gonna probably take me at least a year and a half to prepare for. So and just being I'm patient with it. it. I mean, because you're a long term pro, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. No, no. And uh, it's yeah. hard to think that way, though. Yeah. Believe me, I've had to battle it later in my career. As you see me be banged up and try, and it's. It's tough sometimes to be like, hey, it just ain't there right now. Well, just got to take your time. <laughs> that's the thing. You have to take your time, and it doesn't – I mean, it's almost like you have to have some luck with it lining up, especially no at question. a meet with all three. So. Dude, think about when you pulled 650 down in Dayton, you were changing jobs. I just – that was – Right? The gym, right? You just the changed the gym. The before was yeah. when I left and started my own business. <laughs> that was another scary But thing. you really had no, like um, – you had like no pressure on you for that meat because you didn't cut weight and you just said, I'm just going to have fun, in. right? I, you know, I normally weigh around 190, walked in. Um, yeah, that, I think that Tuesday. There's no expectation, essentially. No, no. And that's why you fucking and I, murdered I, I think there's something, I'm not like a super, I don't get like super nervous. You know, maybe yeah. some of my first means I got super nervous, but, um, you know, especially a lot of the ones now, I try to be, you know, help coach some of the newer guys yep. too, but I, I'm not a super nervous person, but I, I felt calm. And I think a lot of it was because I left the gym I was working for. Your pressure changed, like, outside of the... I, I walked out to talking to that guy. You know, I, I, I'm i not super... You know, I told him what was up and what I was doing. I was super honest with him. I looked at his face and shook his hand and walked out of there. But I, when I walked out of there, I was like, did I really just fucking do that? I mean, <laughs> you know, so... You know, for con for context, I guess, for the story, yeah. I, I was working at this gym, and a lot of my clients came with me at my new place, so... Where I'm working, so... And, and a lot of them were the ones that pushed me to do that, and I was fucking nervous as hell to sure. say this to this guy yeah. but you know i did what i had to but do you for, knew it was i had time. to do that for my business yeah yeah it was time you know what's so crazy is a lot of people especially on the website that are super into what you know is going on and their their lifting's important they don't take the outside stressors in, in, in into account and i try to explain it like this is what i do for a living this is what you do for a living and we still have all these outside you know it's business it's it's uh personal like that all has to do with the lifting. So sometimes when your deadlift's off, it's not because your deadlift's off. 
it's because there's nine other things that are off too and it's just part of the process bro that's that's the thing that's getting tougher for me as i get more uh you know become more of a business owner in, per, in my sure. personal training is is being able to separate them you know because that's it's tough the, you know people still ask me though why do you get up super early and it's really you say this all the time it's uninterrupted it's bro it's uninterrupted and it's the only time you're going to get that that it's just the fucking fact when i'm lifting at the gym where i train at, it it's just it, it's you not know, the people, same clients bro. are hitting me up you know it's just not the same and that's that's important to me because I know when my lifting's off, my training's also off. Business is off too, bro. Usually so, when my shit's off. Right? And it's kind of funny how that works out, you know, because you'd think like maybe if one's up, the other's down, right? But that, no, there's no way. They go hand in hand because it's, to me, it's a confidence thing. And that's, if I'm walking out of the gym every day knowing what, you know, I got it done, you know. It's a fucking recipe for success, homie. Straight up. And yeah, it just I, worked. I, I, I haven't I, led you wrong yet. No. I, I, I saw that when I was 16 and I realized yeah. it. So. You know what's so crazy is like people can't grasp it because it's so extreme. But then the result is so extreme. So it's easy to grasp once you're in it because it's like, why would I do anything else? And, and why is there 20 fucking five people there? It's all for a certain. There's a recipe to it that is that is that good. Yeah, it's it, it, luckily I grew up in a lot of team sports, and it's it's everything that was to me. And, yeah. But I love lifting that much more, and it's you know I'll never you know really say it in there, but I fucking hate when I get beat. You know, still. Of course. And I, and I, I'm I not, fucking hate when I get beat, and I get beat all the time. It sucks. It's, <laughs> <laughs> that I you're never I was, gonna get used to that. Yeah, I remember when I first started beating you, and I, I was loving it. But, Fuck yeah. But now, well, I'm, you got beat the other day, and I was I'm fucking get, with you about it. Yeah, I know, and it pissed me off. Because it was good for you. Yeah, I need it. Well, I'm not the strongest guy in the gym yeah. right now, and I, I love it. I mean, it's... Who do you think is? Maybe Will? Will or Tyler, I'd probably yeah. say. Yeah, Tyler's fucking strong. I don't know. I Both still, are 165. I would still say I would have the total. But, for sure. But but they're, but Will's going to give you a run soon, because he's going to uh, be at 81 or two. Yeah, oh yeah. I Will gets his deadlift together, it's going to be... I mean, really, my plan is just to stay around 190. I don't... Yep. I can't really. It, 198 is tough for me. Yeah. Well, dude, it, you got abs at fucking 195. Yeah. Bro. So you know, I, I'm trying to stay a little lean, at least for yep. my business, even if I'm not doing a show. For sure. Okay. But marketing, homie. But I'm 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 trying to get the 700 at you know at least I don't know 190, 195. Walk in all there. day. So that's gonna be a cool day. Yeah, it's gonna take a little time. It's gonna take some time, but I think it's gonna be there. The uh, let's talk about all right. So deadlifts, what you're kind of known for. Two or three things that you have to be doing on a regular basis too even try to get to 700 pounds like what what really contributed to that 650 zach yeah i think for me is actually just my hamstrings are strong and mm -hmm. i think that's why i have a, a great deadlift for sure i think to have a good deadlift though you need definitely strong hamstrings i didn't realize the difference until we started doing the nordics watching you be able to do them out the gate mm -hmm. and then how weak i felt at it and my best deadlift raw is 575 mm -hmm. so so i i've pulled some decent weight off the ground but it was a drastic difference like the between you and everyone else now it's gaps closed a little bit but yeah. the reality was it was yeah like big zach this, this is what i think really what it comes down to is for me on those you know a lot of those hinge or falling you know ghd yep. russian lean uh you know Nord whatever for me it's it's being able to feel my hamstring contract as much as possible because when i'm setting up you know i pull sumo if i'm pulling a max yeah a max deadlift for me when i'm stepping up to that bar I'm, you know, I'm a dive bomber. Yep. That's ultimately I love works, it. works best for me. And I'm thinking about it being as quick as I can. And for me, You're that's, just a loaded that's up. contracting. I mean, my hamstrings are fucking cramping after I pull because I, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm trying so to So are dig. you contracting them like that as you're standing there? I'm, oh, so, so it's squeeze them you know, as hard I'm as you can. Dig pushing out. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything we know to do push sure. out, knees out. But I, I'm just trying to generate so much like kinetic energy just from the love start. It. That's right. Right when I, my left hand grabs, bang. And it's like a fucking... And you know what? Sometimes you got to be real tight. You got to be in good position. And sometimes it's, you know, it's hurt me. But man, I've never, I still haven't seen anyone pull 650 that fast in my body. No. Not that I ain't taking fucking drugs. So, so I'm getting better at it. Yeah, no. But, but that front that, squat was a big key too. And then super the heavy, I, well, the heavy back extensions helped a ton rate right during that time too, didn't it, when Zach? I, when I front squatted 455, that's my best raw front squat. Well, with, you know, with knee wraps. wraps and a belt. That, that was. That was I did like that. two weeks before you pulled that, wasn't it? I, it was a, two weeks after I pulled after it. You pulled yeah, it. so I mean, I, you know, I was so right, right there. there. I was right there because it was around the Arnold, I think. Yeah, that's somewhere. right. But definitely those in conjunction. You know, I when I first came to old school, I was pulling like conventional. I barely deadlift. I didn't really know. But for me, conventional, 
I have to train that too. I yeah, mean, I feel course. my hamstrings way more. Oh too, yeah, it's all too, hamstrings. So you know, I think the big thing for me and a lot of people is just you know ha- getting your hamstrings stronger. Just do more sled walks, yeah. PhDs, everything. Just just up your GPP. You know, for me in my head, you know. I'm trying to rotate. I do some type of hamstring exercise every day, right? I mean, that's how good stacked is. You heard it here and, first. Yep. And so, you know, I just try to rotate it, mix it up as much as possible. But GHDs, Russian leans, and I, I'm I'm going for the contraction in that hamstring. And I, think I like I, that tip, dude, because that's huge. I think because yeah, you know people probably don't really know what that feels like to get tight like that. And I honestly, I don't know that I've ever really like basically flexed my hamstrings going into a dive bomb like how you're talking where they're like almost hurting you're flexing them so hard yeah i'm just I'm that's pretty cool create so much force and really I, I just look at it from like a bodybuilding standpoint of view too i'm going for the contraction of my hamstrings yeah. that's what's going to help make them bigger so you know once again we're trying to do both so i think we are doing both yeah pretty well i'd say <laughs> yeah seems to be working well um talk about that so the last bodybuilding show where you got your pro card obviously we got to compete together which yep. was a blast yeah what it feel like to have in the same year, you know, accomplishments like that of yeah. powerlifting and bodybuilding, which is pretty unheard of. Yeah, I mean, it, it came, you know, for me, you know, Tyler and I hosted the OPBA. Yep. I, I Go ahead and to, explain what that is. Yeah, so we held, held two events back, I don't know, two years ago, and essentially it was a bodybuilding show on Saturday, right? Yep. You competed in the first yep. one, and it was powerlifting meet on Sunday, and there's an overall winner. Um, so it was the best of both, right? Mm-hmm. So we held two of those competitions. So I felt personally, I always had to be a model of that. Hundred percent. Right. So you know, I started seeing some things line up, and I knew I had to do a bodybuilding show here soon. Uh, you know, we talk about this all the time, but when I'm in, it's better, part of the marketing, man. Yeah, it's part of the marketing, and it and I love it. You know, to me, that's way more of a challenge than the power, powerlifting is a uh, super drawn out process. Yeah. You know, bodybuilding, you can get ready for that, but uh, it's physically, you have to be a lot more disciplined for bodybuilding. It's just this is fucking the truth. truth. This yeah. is the truth. <laughs> this is the truth. So you know. For me, I started seeing like things lining up there, and I I got the pro, I, you know, fifteen hundred yep. at one eighty one at your yep. high school meet. Yep. For the charity, and then that fall. Because you went uh, five eighty. Five eighty. Bench five eighty. Just six hundred on squat. Yeah. I had a horrible day benching, of course. What'd you bench? Like two eighty. <laughs> And then you pulled six, six forty, six forty at eighty one. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, that was cool. Yeah, so that was fifteen hundred at one eighty one, and I, I was proud of that. And then you know you started talking about maybe getting ready for another bodybuilding. Well, yeah, because I ripped my shoulder off, and I was like, well, fuck, yes. I'm not getting surgery, that's so let's just fucking do a bodybuilding show. And you're like, I'll do it with you, G. Well, this is the <laughs> truth, and I, you know a lot of the guys will you know step up and do powerlifting meets together, but the bodybuilding I think is even more important to have like kind of a group. Because that's it's, that helped. it's a process, and Will was doing it, so we had a lot of you know it was fun, and that's why I wanted to do it too. And I was like, hey, you know what? I haven't done one in like three years now. Yeah, it's true. It was a little ba- while. I need to get back on stage, and you know I did well in the teen. Division. Had it been since you did the one with Tommy? Yeah, that, oh, I've was that, that was, oh I've wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, damn, that was a while. So it was about like three and a half years. But see, think about it. You compounded all that powerlifting in that three years yeah. to make those totals. Yeah. Wow. And okay. I stepped on stage at the first show. I was probably like one sixty four. Yeah, and yeah. Then up. Uh, last fall. He's like 180, wasn't you? Yeah, like 177, 180, 178. Yeah, That's I think good. I was just under 180. Yeah. yeah. And I ate that With the 15 pound, 1,500 pound yeah. total. Yeah, so that was, what, September? So these were five months apart. Wow. So, 81. And you had to watch me on Snapchat or fucking my Instagram story acting like a fool the night before. Yeah. <laughs> I was so pissed. I'm sitting there. <laughs> well, listen, when we went out to lunch, I ate that burger. You look tired. beer. And the... And you look way better at the night show. I was out there acting crazy. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I'm <laughs> sitting here starving. <laughs> I'm saying to Kelsey, you know, she lives up by where the show was. I'm like, this motherfucker. Uh. I was like, Zach, I don't know if you should do this, but I'm just going to go out and eat everything the you, night before and see what happens. Like, you, you like end the call and you're like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no. <laughs> that worked out good for no, both of us. You got a too, yeah. so I mean, shit. I mean, that was good. That was a fun experience. Yeah, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a good show. Dude, when I look back at that, my shoulder is so flat, bro. I mean, that's... What I mean, a cool story, though. Like, I was helped. I was proud of myself, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. It was hard. Yeah, it's crazy. I Actually, it's really weird looking at that photo. I mean, how different you look. Really. I looked a lot different. Yeah. I had no activation, basically, on yeah, my left side. because you've always been, like, pretty broad, so... I always had, like, decent caps to my shoulders yeah, yeah. and pretty wide pecs. And so, like, not being able to get a pump... Because literally that happened like a month before I signed up for the show. Yeah, that was what? Yeah, you did that. Because I did it in like a 
in like July. So it'd be about a year as of this month. Okay. And then the show was like in September. September. So I basically like trained. Really no shoulder. No, <laughs> no shoulder or chest. Dude. Yeah, because I remember you're like benching. I think it really like got, me, yeah, 10 or 15. I think it really got me through it because once again, I just did daily fire on this. Like having that public accountability when I said, all right, you know what? I'm not going to get surgery. I'm going to yeah. do this fucking bodybuilding show. And people were like, what? You know, it made, it made me train a lot harder to try you to, to try to figure it out. Well, listen, I think a lot of your shoulder injury is what helped my bench a lot because we, you know, you started figuring out how much stronger our upper backs need to be. Way right? stronger, bro. Yeah. That, you know, that's so going to help. Once again, these things happen and we, you know, we get better. You know, I think, I think any time of, and just like the stuff I'm learning with the knees right now, like, you know, through any type of injuries or discomfort, you start to go on these deep dives and you learn and then the content can help the guys from the crew that are younger, like yourself or the people on the website. And I take a lot of pride in that. I, I don't mind taking some knocks for you guys Listen. because at the end of the day, like it's a team thing and I'm, I'm ahead because I was born, you know, earlier than you guys and I didn't have the same resources, but I can see it already coming up with these young dudes, especially the new, the most new dudes mm. between Tyler and Will, yeah, yeah. and like, cause you're kind of an OG now at yeah, this I point. So. so, I'm younger than everyone. I know, which is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, good. I kind of like, I'll, you know, I'll take the. Hey, I'll take it. That's good. That's um, good. what's next for Zach Matheny? So, figuring out, you know, what what does my business look like in the next, yep. you know, three to five years, and, you know. It, it's it's been a lot of reflection in the last few months, you know, because you know I, I think we're at this really pivotal time, especially in fitness. I think a good time, you know. I, Absolutely. I, just, I really think a lot of things are going differently, um, probably in the coming years. Um, no gyms question. Are, gyms are going to look different. You know, I see these gyms out in California that have like these plexiglass, <laughs> right? Like, I, I just you yeah. don't know where it's going to go. Who knows, right? Yeah. So you know, I I try to remind myself of that, but you know, I still trying to build the online business. That's sure. something I'm trying to do. Uh, myself and figure that out but for me really it's figuring out all right how am I gonna have my own gym yep. what is that gonna look like is that gonna be more of a studio sure uh, you know I'm talking about with the girl right now you know we're talking about some stuff yeah but, I mean the reality is the amount of clients you have that's a that's needs to happen probably well listen I, I said I, I want to be if the it best. makes sense I always hear Gary B say that, you know hey you can be the best trainer in a small you know he talks about being the best and you know there's a lot of people out there can be the best. And you can, I want to be the best personal trainer in Colum downtown Columbus. hundred percent. All right. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to do it. I tell my friends all the time. I ain't trying to just be like the, the best personal trainer. Like, or I want to be like one of the best in the city. Bro. Like motherfuckers didn't know me when I moved here. And then, then it became, I wanted to be one of the best out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you start to evolve when you can conquer, like motherfuckers were driving to my side of town to train with me. They're driving down to see you. Like, Hundred percent. I was always trying to compete with other trainer. Yeah. You know, to have more clients. You know, that's you know, it started at that. You know, now I'm trying to be the best in the city and fuck yeah, just keep going. You know, you so I'm at, I'm definitely at this pivotal point where I'm trying to figure out, hey, what's the next move with like training with Zach and all his clients. Yeah. So figuring that out, but I, I definitely know growing the online side is definitely one of huge the, one of the next steps. That combination of especially now that you get the high high end in home, mm -hmm. which is huge, and Listen, usually I those people have money no matter what. Well, you know, we talked in the beginning how keeping my cost low, and I'm like here thinking in my head, man, like I can, you know, I drive a Honda Accord, I can fit most of this stuff in my trunk. Yeah. You know, the, the, the geriatric in home, that's a huge crowd. Kelsey's oh. in physical therapy, and then she's like giving me all these numbers, like how many people need this oh, know, to dude. some degree. Physical. The baby boomers are huge, man. It's a massive amount training. of people. Oh, my God. And it, it's. It's, it's a good market. So, you know, I could definitely see, you know, I, the town I grew up in, there was this, this uh, company. It was like two guy, two trainers and a tr tr something like that. But basically mm -hmm. they drove around house to house, charged, you know, a good, a good rate. And, you know, so, you know, that's, that could be something where. So really it's your, uh, it's the evolution next just yeah. to see what's next. Yeah. I tell you, you know, I've talked next about step, this a lot. The next is, step is being in more control though. I know that. So I agree I got, with that. That's, whatever I'm doing next, that's, you know. Well, and there's something to be said, Zach, I'm telling you. You walk in and put your keys on the desk, and yep. you know it's yours. That's what I'm saying. It just doesn't I, change, said, bro. Yeah. That, that never gets old. That's something I don't know yet. And you, and, and you, you, always, you always telling me that. So, and you'll definitely experience that yeah. soon, I would think. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to share with everybody, Zach? You know, there's been a lot of people on here who support you over the years, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just, you know, listen. I, I identified when I was, you know, first starting out at old school, like, hey, this. I, I knew from the beginning. That's why I got it tatted on me with Jacob and Tyler. I was like, hey, this is a long, it's a long term thing, and and for me it's it's actually coming so full circle full circle now but i i have to have the gym in my life to be successful Same. even if like you know maybe 
15, 20 years, I'm invested in other things and maybe not training as much, but yeah. like, Hey man, I have to train. Cause that's, that's what drives me every day. And you know, maybe at first I didn't think I was going to be a personal trainer, but man, I love this stuff so much. And I, I really can't do anything else. Well, the other thing is too, is I think old school gym, I, I talked to this about with Trey when he got the performance pit tattoo, that's never going to change about him. No. No matter how old he is, old school is never going to change about us, whether we do it for another year or 10 years. That part of our lives is cemented. Mm -hmm. These things that we've experienced, especially with this and coming back, that's cemented. So whether we all move away and you go to fucking Hollywood, you do it, it, does, it isn't going to change what join a real gym, what yeah. old school did for all of us. Yeah. That's why, like, when I got it tatted, I see these other guys getting tatted. It, it's just always going to mean the same thing. Yeah, it's, I think... It's all these memories and like, you know, joking about being afraid of Treadway. <laughs> That's and, amazing. And these things, you know, it's, I mean, these, you guys are my best friends and, yeah. you know, and have been business partners and mentors and, you know, it's always going to be there for me. Yeah, same. You know? All right, where, where can they find you at, Zach? So Instagram at Zach underscore Matheny. Trainingwithzach.com is my website if you're interested in personal training in downtown Columbus. Uh, and, campus, and, and look, we only there. got like, uh, I only have like five online one-on-one -on -one spots and they're full. So my man, Zach can take you. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me up. And I got some online training too. So hit me up at Zach underscore Matheny on Instagram, Twitter, all that training with Zach.com website. So all right, G cast for Zach Matheny. It's Corey G. We out. Yep. Appreciate it.